All right, Krishna, everyone, this is Achuta Bhava from Nightlight Astrology. And today I'm taking another question in my Bhakti Q&A series. Um, so many good questions that you guys have um, come up with. This goes out to all the people out there who have taken up mantra meditation. Um, if you are watching my Bhakti channel and you're watching some of my videos and you have not yet done that, that is the one thing that would allow for you to get a firsthand experience of Bhakti. Many of these videos are philosophical. We're talking about the philosophy of bhakti yoga. But it's hard to talk about the philosophy of bhakti yoga unless you're also having experiences with bhakti yoga so you can see, taste, touch, experience the sort of fruits of that bhakti practice itself. The number one most basic thing that you can do, and I'll give you we'll give you 3 of them. The number one most basic thing that you can do is chant every day. So in the bhakti tradition, the line that I come from, we chant the maha mantra, chanting the names of God every day. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So that mantra um, said over and over again every day on uh, prayer beads is the practice that I described in probably one of my most popular bhakti videos that I've ever made, which was called Easy Practices of Surrender Mantra Meditation. So you can go back in my archives and watch that one. Really recommend uh, watching that and taking up mantra meditation so that you can actually feel and experience what bhakti is like. But let's just give you a couple of others. Another easy way to bring bhakti into your life is to listen to kirtan every day. So if you look up some Hare Krishna kirtan on YouTube, create a playlist, find some songs you like, listen to those throughout your day. Just notice the way that the vibration changes. You start to feel that sweetness, that tender, loving devotion, love of God starts to permeate the atmosphere just by listening to Kirtan every day, kind of making that your primary musical background for even try it for a week of your life. Don't listen to anything but Kirtan for a week of your life, or if anything else, maybe like nature sounds or flute music or something, but just keep keep it, keep Kirtan going in your space. Keep the vibration of Kirtan going. Listen to people chanting the names of Krishna. The third practice would be um, also just reading a little bit of the Bhagavad Gita every day. This is a practice that I um, cherish. Uh, if you've never read the Gita before, reading it for the first time can be um, awesome. I can, I've done lots of videos about the Gita before, but I recommend the Graham Schweg um, edition or uh, you could even find, I think there's Eknath Swaran. He's another good addition, but Graham Schweig is my favorite. He's a devotee in, in the line that I come from and um, really like his translation for total newcomers. So read, read the Gita, read a chapter of the Gita every day. That can bring start giving you the mood and flavor of bhakti as well. Those are really, really simple things that just you can get started with. Um, so people who are experiencing bhakti every day uh, especially mantra meditation. I got this question that come in. We'll, we'll ask this, and this person asked this question too. Is it more important that I be doing a high quantity of mantras, meaning rounds on a, on prayer beads? And I go over that in the easy practices of surrender video on mantra meditation. I talk about how to use the prayer beads and stuff like that. But should I do more rounds? In other words, more mantras, more rounds on the beads, or should I be focused on higher quality? Of, of concentration or presence or something like that. So ideally it's both. Ideally it's lots of rounds and high quality. You know, that's what we're, we're all aiming for. Um, but there's, there are different ways of answering this. So the one thing is that if someone were to approach, you know, like in, in our initiation, we vow to chant 16 rounds a day. It takes about like an hour and a half, maybe two hours for some people. And every day we chant uh, 16 rounds, 108 mantras per round. And um, that time, there's going to be, the mind is going to be wandering. You're not going to be focused or attentive, you know, and then there's going to be patches where you probably are. And the idea is that that'll improve in time. Um, so quality really matters. You don't want to be approaching that like, oh, I just, I'll just get all 16 rounds done and I'll just be, you know, walking around on my cell phone, watching TV, talking to other people. Cause it's, it's just, I just got to get the rounds done. That would be an example of quantity, a, a kind of ritualistic quantity mindset that would absolutely not be bhakti. It really wouldn't be helpful in, in many ways. 
On the other hand, um, everything counts, <laughs> you know, e even if you were to do that and walk around sort of mindlessly just chanting the names of God, that's something. It's better than, you know, it's better than chanting the names of <laughs> Snuffleupagus and eating Cheetos, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, <laughs> so, um, so that would be something. But obviously, the idea is to be attentive and to hear ourselves chanting each mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. You can hear your own voice chanting. So it's like you're listening to it as you're speaking the mantra and you, you try to stay present and open up the heart, open up the emotional body, pour some love, call, call, call out through the mantra. Let the mantra be, let the way that you speak the mantra be like a prayer. So are we going to be in that space for all 16 rounds? If you're doing 16 rounds a day, or even if you're doing like two rounds or one round, no, you won't be. And you do want the quality to increase because you want the actual consciousness to change. And the quality of the consciousness is the change that we're looking for. We're looking for love. So that's, you know, it's not just a, a numbers game. At the same time, as my guru likes to use the phrase numerical strength, the thing is, is that the the sacrifice of just showing up and being disciplined enough to get through a set number of rounds every day, even if you start really low, like just one round, or you start with a few, three or four rounds, or you go all the way up to like 16 or some people even more. So if you're doing that every day and you're just, you're trying, you're not just being purely about numbers, but you're trying. Um, and you're also not using the excuse. Well, you know, my, my, I'm not very, I can't focus all the way through one round. So that means I should never do more than one round. No, no, no. That's not our, that's not the attitude as well. Numerical strength is also important. It means that we, um, we, we push ourselves to try to be present for, you know, for further and further durations of time. And what you'll find is that if you chant eight rounds, maybe it takes you 45 minutes, um, those 45 minutes you may come and go through real attentiveness and distraction along the way in many ups and downs. So we need to have those ups and downs of conscious attention and distraction for a long period of time. So, because it's, it's not just, it's not just being attentive for a long period of time, right? It's about being attentive and inattentive alternately over a long period of time that starts to reveal to us the depth of our situation. You know what I mean? The depth of our problem with attention, the depth of our problem with love, the depth of our, our problems with, um, you know, putting uh, love of God and love of other souls at the center of our lives. So that numerical strength does things that are a part of the process, just as much as somehow passing the grade and being purely attentive for, I mean, we're not going to be, so we're just, we're just going to say, well, because I can't chant past 10 mantras without losing focus that I won't do more than 10. No chant a thousand, you know, and after you've chanted a thousand watch and, and worked trying to come back to attentiveness in attentive, work it for the whole time. And that the duration, the length, the quantity will have also participated in helping purify and change our consciousness. And in time, sure, we get more attentive. Our chanting is stronger. There are improvements that can be sort of seen and you can feel them, but we, we, we would, we will also have needed not just quality, but we will have needed quantity to get there. They're both a part of the package. Not one is better than the other, although um, there, you do tend to run into problems if you say it's only quantity, but you can also run into problems if you are a purist and say, well, it's only quality and I won't do more quantity until the quality is there. So both can be distractions in the same way that people you know, worship the future. The future will be better in the past. No, things were be best in the past. And so we tend to get into extremes. Oh, it's, I have to get a certain number done. That, that'll mean good. No, it has to be pure quality. I won't go past 10 mantras. You know, it's, no, it's, it, you know, that's why we need a good amount of, a good amount of mantras to recite. And we also need to try to focus on the quality of them as we go. So always kind of balancing those things out. Hope this is helpful for people out there. One thing that I recommend is also don't stay stuck for too long. You think about your goal in the Krishna Bhakti tradition, sort of initiation goal of getting to 16 rounds daily. Um, we, most of us are going to get there gradually. You know, you're going to take baby steps, like two rounds a day, 
six rounds a day, eight rounds, you know, it'll kind of gradually go up. Don't plateau for too long. You know, if you get to a place where you're feeling stuck, sometimes the best thing to do is to actually add a round. Okay, I'm going to do nine rounds and push it a little further. And all of a sudden you start growing and you're, you realize um, that, you know, by adding a little bit more than I think I can do, I actually grow in a positive way too. So adding, adding quantity can actually help sometimes too. And you have to uh, gradually work your way up to like higher numbers anyway. So, all right. Well, if you guys have questions about bhakti, about anything related to mantra meditation or philosophy of bhakti, feel free to email me anytime info at nightlightastrology.com, put bhakti Q and A in the subject line. That's what I've got for today. Take it easy, everyone. 